All right, welcome everybody to the Players Only Podcast. It's uh, me, Vince, and I'm here with uh, Austin, the fantasy football guru. Absolutely. And yeah, if you want to take it away? Absolutely. Uh, first off, uh, we are proudly sponsored by Vince's Van Cave. <laughs> Go to check out that Etsy shop. Uh Definitely check out the People's Council. Yeah. Probably the best thing for the buck, especially with Father's Day right around the corner, yeah. uh, with all the old school gaming uh, and whatnot. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, Vince's yeah, Man Cave now over uh, 200 items, and uh, if you're looking for PS2 games, uh, <laughs> word on the street is those will be added soon once uh, the Finch household is uh, done testing them for me. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely uh <laughs> but jumping jumping right into sports uh i guess the the biggest news that kind of surprised me out of nowhere was the uh jimmy g news uh it looked like he passed his physical and all that when he got all signed up with the raiders then all of a sudden they came out that he had this major foot surgery and they don't know if he's actually going to be able to play at all next year yeah <laughs> so they had to make an addendum to his contract and basically says that uh, if he doesn't play at all, he does not get paid a dime, uh, which is nuts, not only for just the football world in general, maybe looking to see Jimmy make some kind of comeback, uh, but then also, for fantasy-wise, if you were looking at the Raiders, you're like, uh-oh, <laughs> Raiders don't have a quarterback. So, uh, what are your thoughts going into... Uh, Raider season. Uh, granted, we're still here in June, so there's plenty of time. But uh, what are your thoughts? Well, for the Jimmy G fans out there, first when I heard this, I think even if he plays some game this season, I, I think this is like a foot injury. If he ever re-injures it, he could easily be done and, oh. and like call it a career. So, for the few Jimmy G fans out there, uh, maybe coming <laughs> to an end soon. Um, we'll see. Sure. Uh, for the Raiders. Uh, I mean, I don't really know if they did a whole lot to get better. They're in a real tough conference. Uh, I mean, if you suck, hopefully you get the. You're just hoping for one of the top two picks so that you can take one of those two quarterbacks and right and start the rebuild. Probably trade Adams and see what happens. No, for sure. Uh, the scariest thing for me when it comes to the, with the Jimmy G. When he uh, got traded to the 49ers, and we saw those last uh, what six games where he went six and zero. You're like, wow, this could be this could be crazy. This could be crazy upside. The Patriots, what were they doing, keeping him on the bench? <laughs> yeah. You know, with uh, why didn't you trade him sooner or, or something? Just hiding him behind Tom Brady, and then it's just been a uh, a tragic tale uh, ever since. Uh, he just never really showed what he had after those six games. So. Uh, unfortunately, that's just kind of the way it is. So, um, But uh, in other news, uh, we have the NBA Finals underway. The series currently, uh, while filming this, is tied 1-1. One to one. Uh, I haven't watched really any of it, so uh, your thoughts? Um, well, yeah, they snuck one out. They almost blew a big-time lead uh, last night. Uh, the big uh, adjustment was uh, Jimmy Butler guarding uh, Jamal Murray. Um, maybe slowed him down a little bit. Uh, but but yeah, I, I thought the Heat overall just outplayed him uh, Sunday. For sure. Um, I still uh, don't see the Heat winning more than two games in the finals. So there's that. Right. <laughs> um, one question I was kind of going to ask you is Joker – in the last couple of years, is just he's he's just dominating, right? Yeah. Um, just absolute domination. In your mind, do you think maybe not necessarily right now, but will be better than Shaq? Oh no! Uh, so right, a lot of people have been talking about this, and like <laughs> the the frustrating part is, oh well, right, Joker, he gets assists, he mm-hmm. he shoots threes for once in a while or whatever and Shaq didn't but uh, no I, I think Shaq was more uh, dominant player uh, I, I don't I don't think it's really 
uh, that big a deal that he can pass a little bit. Um, For sure. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. When, with Shaq, he, he's just more of the intimidation factor, I think, more than anything. And then Joker is just a triple-double machine. So It's just like this time of year, it's like every time the star player is always in the final. I remember <laughs> last year, oh, Steph Curry, top ten of all time. Yep. No way. <laughs> if, you uh, say, I remember. if you want to say greatest shooter, go ahead. But yeah. there's more to basketball than shooting, and um, I just didn't. I just didn't like that. Plus, two, two of his finals or two of his championships, he got. He had Durant on his team, which helped a lot. Uh, the first one, they they got lucky that every team they played had a whole lot of injuries or injuries to one of the starters. And then the finals uh, against Cleveland, it was two top players, Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, that is what it is. Next year, who knows? Uh, yeah, no, for sure. I think, like, the, the big thing with Steph is he changed the game, right? Everybody was always going for twos or dunks or whatever. He, he changed the three-point game, and so everybody's always going to give him a lot more praise. So I think the, the, the best shooter is definitely a, a talking point for sure. Yeah. But greatest, uh, you know, I, I remember last year too, everybody had him even higher than higher than Kobe. And then at some points they said he probably was even better than Jordan or LeBron. Yeah. You know, and that, that, that's, that's pushing it <laughs> quite a bit. You know, he still has a lot more to prove if he wants to be that high. Yeah. Um, so. For sure, and and again, yeah. When when two of the championships, he wasn't even the best player on his team. Like, come on. Right. And if it was if it was LeBron instead of Kevin Durant, like the league yeah. the league would have shut shut that down because that that wouldn't <laughs> even have been fun to watch. They would have stomped every team sixteen and all. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, and then in not really all that surprising news everybody probably could have seen this coming as of mid-december i think almost close to uh christmas eve but shannon sharp is leaving undisputed uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> i think you have some things to say yeah. about this but what else kind of started off with is i mean, everybody saw it coming it started in december uh after uh, the tweets when Demar Hamlin went down and they were in a screaming match and and everything, whether or not Shannon Sharp, uh, it was is as good as Tom Brady. He took that super personally, and ever since then, the 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 arguments that went from kind of decent to annoying uh, back and forth to almost basically screaming matches. So it's gotten a little out of hand in the last couple of months. And uh, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad you brought this up because there's, there's a lot I could hit on here. First, like to make some predictions, sure. I think if he doesn't end up being the, the permanent partner with Skip, he'll at least be a regular replacement um, until, until they find another guy. I think uh, Nick Wright on there. So I think they'll have okay. someone on there that is pro-LeBron because Skip is always saying he's not that good. Um, yep. I also think with Shannon, uh, I don't know if it was Skip as much as, like, I think he wants to do some, like, he's got his own podcast, but it's more of, like, an interview every so often. Like, I, I've watched the one with Adrian Peterson. It's not like they're really talking about new events like, like we are here. Um, yeah. It's, it's more of like interviews every so often I don't know if it's weekly monthly um, or what what the case is there uh, but but uh, I, I probably see him seeing st starting some kind of actual podcast where he talks about topics he just wants to talk about because um, because yeah there were there were definitely times watching clips of him where like they would come in the next day, talk about a playoff basketball game, and yeah, it just it just didn't really seem like he he watched any of it. Now he's not the yeah. only one on the network that does that. Also, Colin Coward, <laughs> specifically a month ago, uh, did the same thing. Oh, Steph Curry had a virtuoso. This was after Game Four 
when uh, when the Warriors lost to the Lakers, and yep. Curry shot three for fourteen, and he missed a whole bunch of threes in the last minute that would have either tied it or put him ahead. So obviously, obviously didn't really watch that, but but it, anyways. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, the media the media's changing, too, because, you know, they're even putting uh, the Pat McAfee show, they're restreaming that on to ESPN. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I just feel like um, some of these talk well, shows, debate shows, they're, they're just getting so toxic and yeah. turning people off, and then Pat McAfee's so positive. And yeah. uh, also... Like the Pat McAfee show, you know, when he has people like Rogers on there, they kind of get into the X's and O's, the chess match. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just not. Oh, this guy sucks. <laughs> he can't play. Right. You know, just state, <laughs> statement, general statements like that. Yep, and, and that's always what I've been back and forth in when it came to the Pat McAfee show. Sometimes they're a little too overly positive, uh, and they don't like to dive too deep. Uh, sometimes even with somebody like Rogers, because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. That way they don't ever come back, uh, type of thing. And so sometimes that can be annoying. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, it's super positive. You actually know everything that's going on, uh, and it's a longer show, uh, so they can deep dive some things too. Um, and it's kind of nice to see Pac Man <laughs> doing his thing. Uh, and whatnot too. So, uh, Pat McAfee is definitely he's yeah. just he's starting to become a juggernaut uh, yeah, when I, it comes to just sports news. And yeah, I, I can agree with you on the Pat McAfee show on that. Sometimes they like the, you'll click on a you'll click on like a video, eight minutes long, and then the first five minutes, six minutes will just be like reporting the issue, and then yep. maybe maybe some thoughts at the end. It's like okay, I already know whatever event happened. I want to I want to know what you guys on the show think of. <laughs> what's going on right predict what will happen not just we're not ju- just reporting things yeah yeah like for sure this. we're not going to do that for sure it, it, it's kind of the weird thing because pat has always said especially around the time with the adam Thielen, because adam Thielen gave him uh the news first and he refused to report it uh <laughs> so it's kind of like if you're gonna report it later uh, let's deep dive it a little bit more, you know, rather than just say, "Oh yeah, no, he texted me first. Well, report it. You know, it's yeah. kind of it's half your job too. So uh, it'll be interesting, especially with the uh, Disney, ESPN stuff going on with how they structure the show, especially because uh, with Pat McAfee, there's always a lot of swearing, a lot of not necessarily deep dive stuff so i kind of yeah. even though he said it's not going to change the show it's going to change the show this is a matter of how that, and that i don't is, think that is something they asked him that is, that is something they asked him to, to not swear as much or at all right yeah and i don't think somebody like pac-man can be on something where there's not a lot of swearing or a lot <laughs> of things that he can deep dive because he, he he can go on some tangents that don't really make any sense <laughs> uh and so on so it, it'll be interesting for sure so yeah. uh but uh before i dive into the really big topic that kind of dives into both a little bit of sports and gaming do you have anything that you want to uh touch on for sports um no i i, I think i think you hit on the the, the main stuff for the week kind of slow this yeah. down here yeah no for sure it's it's sports of this for a reason. Uh, but this is something that's really going to rock. Uh, one of our friends especially is going to have a, a, a field day with this. Uh, <laughs> but uh, EA Sports has officially announced that they are putting NFTs in sports games in general, but they are going to start with Madden uh, coming out this, uh, <laughs> this fall. And uh, Nike has even come, come in and said that they are not only supporting the deal, they are diving headfirst into this uh, as well. Uh, and it is going to piss so many people off. I've already seen sport uh, ranting videos on it. Uh, Angry Joe, who may not be as prominent a figure as he was, you know, five, ten years ago, uh, released a hour and a half long rant about it. <laughs> uh, it. It's pissed a lot of people off. Uh, 
What are your thoughts before I dive too deep well, into mine? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, again, I, I'm someone that's, whether you're pro or against NFT, I, I see it as technology we're going to we're gonna use in the future, um, yep. uh, just because of the benefits. Uh, did, did they give any other details, like what, what these NFTs would do? Like, no, I, I know with... Not that I saw. Because I, I can't imagine with Madden, you have that all, uh, whatever that one mode's called, where you unlock the cards and then you have the team. Oh, I imagine maybe yeah. something like that, uh, that they that they would use it inside. But, um, uh, you know, I, right, there's a lot of gamers against it. Um, they're clearly not going to be like scam NFTs. Uh, like, like right. you know, you see a lot of projects like that out there. Like, you know, just watch uh, Logan Paul's podcast from two years ago, and you know, you can find a lot there. Like the zoo one. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I mean, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, actually, um, it'll make the metaverse that much more legitimate in a couple of years. Um, For sure. But yeah, what, what are your oh. thoughts? So, he, the problem is they haven't fully released everything that surrounds this, right? Because with that, uh, with the cards that you were talking about, right? I mean, that's basically almost an NFT uh, as well. It's just other people can also have that card, right? Yeah. Um, so this is going to be some, something that you can specifically buy. Now, it'll be cool if they have like a in-game like store wise where hey you buy this nft or you get like a pack and you get this nft oh i don't really want it but on the store it's going for a hundred bucks i'll just put it on the store and i'll pocket that hundred dollars or or what have you right yeah so it'll be cool if they do it that way because there has been games that do this they just don't say nft like csgo i think is like the biggest one that i can pull off the top of my head right you open up the case and then you get these weapon skins and you get the certain rarity and if it's been held used or, or whatever and you check the market oh this thing is worth this knife is worth six hundred dollars i'm just gonna sell it i mean that's basically an nft right so i think it's just more the thing that worries me is that it's EA. <laughs> EA has not been very ethical <laughs> in what they have been doing in the last five-ish years plus, uh, maybe even ten years. So, you know, putting out half-assed games, games that don't work, Anthem. Um, so Robin that's the part that... Addons. <laughs> right. <laughs> So that's the thing that worries me. But what gets me kind of hyped is Nike has seen this as something that's going to profit majorly. That's why they are getting in on it. I love Nike. So if Nike is getting in on it, I feel like it's, <laughs> there can't be too much wrong with this. But who knows? Uh, I'm, I'm very interested to see what exactly is going to be an NFT and what you can do with this NFT. Um, the only thing that I can think of that might suck is uh i don't know if you remember people were pissed with the uh, with cod uh because with the warzone you buy all those skins and then when warzone 2 came out all those skins were gone <laughs> so uh as long as some kind of situation like that doesn't happen where next year when the new matic comes out oh your nfts are only going to be on that game you got to sell all that well the mark is going to be ridiculous there yeah. So, uh, as, right. So as long as something like that doesn't happen, whatever, you know. So. Yeah, and 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 right, we'll see. But you know, uh, a lot, with a lot of different NFTs, there's this thing called royalties, where yep. every time there's a transaction, you know, a little bit would go back to EA. So if they make something good, and people are trading those cards, you know, forever, then. You know, just more more money in the bank or more crypto in the bank. Absolutely. Um, I think kind of switching gears on this a little bit because we're kind of talking about metaverse and and so on. Uh, Facebook <laughs> recently has come out and said that they are finally deep diving uh, into this uh, 
a little bit more. And they are, or not, not Facebook, but uh, Apple is diving into the VR. And they are uh, coming out with a $4,000 VR headset. Uh, oh, wow. That is not... <laughs> and uh, I was looking at it. There's nothing that distinguishes it too much from Facebook's uh, Quest. Uh, which they are actually coming out with a Quest 3 uh, in fall, and it's only going to be $500. <laughs> um, so for some reason, Apple thinks they have this, this mindset they can charge whatever the hell they want uh, <laughs> for basically anything. And uh, $4,000 is a, a lot, <laughs> yeah. a lot of money, uh, especially on a VR set that maybe they, while they have a good track record of supporting things for a good period of time, I, I mean, who's going to spend four grand on a VR set, you know? Yeah, no yeah, no one's got that kind of money. Um, right. I, I really don't see it selling that well at that price. Like, right. That's, <laughs> that's like paychecks for people not just one but multiple and right that's yeah. two months of most people's income coming and, in you and, know and like you know what if you don't like it people are gonna have that those kind of concerns uh right. yeah it's just not a, it's not really essential yeah so and the problem is too is that they what what kind of VR games because it doesn't even have like joysticks like the Quest does or anything like that. It's supposed to be like hand tracking, which that could be cool. And I feel like that's where we're kind of moving towards because even the Quest with their updated joysticks are, are uh, a little less cumbersome than twos and, and so on. So they're getting better with every year. It's just uh, uh, we're making this gigantic jump for something that one it doesn't even look comfortable. <laughs> um, it just kind of looks like a disaster. Um, and I feel like this is something that's going to push VR back. I'm a huge proponent of VR. I think it's going to be a thing in the future uh, for sure. And I feel like if a company is going to try to take advantage of people like this, uh, we're going to stay on consoles and PCs forever. So, yeah. Um, but kind of sticking sort of in the same lines of disasters and, and whatnot. Uh, I don't know how much you have uh, dived into this at all, but uh, Lord of the Rings, one of the biggest franchises in the world, uh, they had a game come out by a smaller-ish indie company uh, about one of the characters, Gollum. Uh, it uh, was released at full price, and it is a disaster. <laughs> uh, the game barely works. Uh, <laughs> the graphics are awful. It actually looks like a PS2 that, that uh, game that you've bought in over the weekend. Uh, <laughs> in some cases, actually, it works worse than a PS2 game. <laughs> uh, the voice acting is absolutely awful. Uh, <laughs> and that overall is just a, a huge disaster now the main thing the main reason i brought this up is uh the developers came out and said uh yeah sorry and that's about it right uh they they do plan on coming out with so, some patches and stuff like that but you bought the game and that's about it you know which we talked a little bit last week game developers they're just releasing games whether they're finished or not and uh they grab your 70 bucks and now and run uh yeah, <laughs> yeah. so to be right another another failed game yeah right uh, era, yeah. right and I'm, one one company that gets a lot of credit now uh but they released the failed game to start with and we bashed our friend because he bought like the ultimate package for it oh, and that was probably one of the you know uh, no Man's Sky, uh, and now it has an update two or three times a year, and it's not a small update either. It's a massive update, uh, so still not my kind of game, but it's really cool that they've actually fully uh, redeveloped the game basically from the start, which uh, is just always cool to see when a developer actually loves its game and yeah. wants to take care of the players. So yeah, uh, like something. 
Right. <laughs> so to me, I, I, I wish that more companies would, because every time they release an update trailer, everybody says thank you, you know, in the, in the comments and stuff like that. There's no, strangely enough on the internet, there's no bad comments on it, right? So that, that, that says a lot about your game, uh, for sure. Um, in, in recent news, uh, Sony... Uh, just like Microsoft has been buying up a lot of developers, uh, but CD Projekt Red, who came out with like games like Cyberpunk and Witcher 3 uh, and so on, says that they are not going to be bought from Sony, even though all the rumors said that they were. Uh, they want to stay independent because they have like 15 games in the works. Uh, for the most part, they release pretty decent games, um, but I kind of wonder sometimes if they... Their ambition is a little bit too big, but uh, with all the acquisitions uh, in general, a big time stir the pot of the console wars. And when people get certain games, or like with Sony, everybody gets the Sony games first, and then in a couple of years, you know, four or five years down the road, then PC finally gets it. But yeah, uh, what it, as somebody who started off on console and only recently in the last three-ish years, uh, I've gone full PC. Uh, when you're looking at all the acquisitions and you're like, well, I can't really play that game, even though most of them aren't really games that you'd be interested in. Uh, what are your thoughts looking in? Uh, well, again, I'm a, I'm a big uh, multiplayer guy. Uh, yep. And, alright, cyber, Cyberpunk, alright, that's single player. I know those games don't go for a whole lot nowadays. Um, yep. Yeah, I guess I, I don't have too many thoughts. It's just probably not Any for me. multiplayer game worth playing is usually on PC anyway, so. And now there's so many of a cross play uh, between consoles and PC. Yep. Um, which, speaking of EA, too, uh, I did see that they are implementing uh, full cross play in the new Madden, which they. I've never had, so even if you're playing on PC, you can play with console players, which is a new thing, so that, that should be pretty interesting uh, to come. Um, I assume, but the, the big... Yeah, right. I assume uh, PC players, you'd still use the controller, though. Right? Probably, I feel like yeah. playing Madden on a mouse and keyboard would be kind of weird. But, right. Yeah. Um, but right around the corner, uh, it really kind of wrap up gaming news, unless you have something more. Yeah, the Summer Game Fest is right around the corner. Uh, Jeff Keighley has been making his rounds uh, with other podcasts, kind of hyping it up. Um, all the other developers mostly are kind of doing their own thing, like Ubisoft and Xbox. Xbox apparently has a massive uh, event that they're kind of planning out so they can show uh, games like Starfield and the new Fable. Um, and whatnot. So there should be plenty of news in the next week or two uh, as far as gaming stuff which is really exciting uh, this is my kind of favorite time of the year um, when E3 was here so that you can just watch game trailers for three days straight it was always my uh, a favorite thing of mine to do over the summer but unfortunately that is the thing of the past um, what are your thoughts with E3 kind of being gone but Summer Game Fest and trying to keep up with all the different uh showings or and whatever they're all kind of doing their own thing yeah and part of that i feel like e3 is gone is because so many so many games are on multiple consoles you know over the years uh i feel like uh strong uh first party titles are just gone uh yep. even nintendo <laughs> um <laughs> but uh right i guess a lot of big titles coming on what or, or yeah, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, it's, sometimes it can be kind of a hassle just trying to figure out when certain events are going to go down. Like, I didn't even know Sony's event was going down a couple days ago when they showed off Spider-Man and stuff. Um, I just happened to be on YouTube. Oh, Sony's Direct is coming up, I guess. So, I don't feel like it's marketed as well. Uh, to go out to all the fans like E3 was. E3 was, hey, it's the weekend of uh, June 9th, and uh, we're just going to watch games for three days. So that, that was always a really, really cool thing for me, personally, but uh, it is what it is. It's kind of a thing in the past at this point. Hopefully it can come back in some way, 
uh, eventually, but we'll see, I guess. Yeah, and I didn't but, even know about the Sony uh, event either until after it came out. Then I saw some some TikToks on it. Uh, right. So right, yeah, it wasn't wasn't marketed very well. For sure. Um, otherwise, uh, do you have anything that you want to talk about well, for gaming before I, we get into the hard hitting news? <laughs> I I had one thing um, about gaming and pride month that i thought you were gonna bring up uh uh with jackson there was articles out about how someone at nintendo said it's about time mario starts doing some gay stuff uh <laughs> hey that's I, i'm just reading the articles my my first reaction was like nintendo has so many skulls in their closet or so many skeletons right. in their closet that now they're just going to pretend to be liberal, woke, whatever, and, and people are just going to go with it. But it's like, I could sit here and bring up during COVID, banning online Smash tournaments, the, the right. mental health uh, risk bracelets that, that they banned, oh, yeah. the money that went towards mental health because they were named after a guy that committed suicide, a famous YouTuber, Etika. Um, yep. Uh, then there's, there's, there's more things they did. Um, I just, I just, uh, one just escaped me, but, but they, they cannot sit here and act, uh, they, they can't sit here and act like that. (laughs) Right. It's, with how, how shady of a company Nintendo has been, (laughs) especially in the last, you know, eight years or so, uh, it, it's just really weird for them to kind of say that and then just, and then also just how I mean, Mario's whole thing is he's after the princess. <laughs> uh, so I don't know how they're gonna try to try to mix that in. Um, I, I I guess and, uh, it just doesn't make sense. And it's like after the Bud Light disaster, after Target putting out the Pride clothes, why in the world would Nintendo try something like this? You know, parents right. buy their kids a lot of games. Like what? Are, are you trying to, like, you know, destroy yourself going into your next console here? Like, come on. But who yeah. knows? Maybe they were just saying that to appease people. It's not like they actually have a game or anything planned. I, I guess it was just... Right. right. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. And if you if you really want to go down that road, right, uh, you don't necessarily have to touch something like Mario, right, which is obviously your biggest thing in the main poll. Like, my thing with a, a lot of changing of races when it comes to movies and, and so on, just make its own character, right? If you need to have something that interacts with like, the pride people, gay or whatever, have some kind of gay character or, or whatever that starts off that way, right? It doesn't just change in the future, you know? So yeah. that way everybody knows you know, what you're getting into and you're buying the thing that you want to buy. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. That that would actually be better if they if they just added a gay character to Mushroom Kingdom, um, right. or else, oh. yeah, they're gonna. I don't know. It's just well, and then, just off more people. <laughs> right. We'll be roasting well, them that, more. <laughs> and it's also like nobody wants this stuff just thrown in your face, right? It, I roll my eyes because look, Kim and I love watching our half-hour sh- sitcom shows and, and stuff like that. And every now and then they have an episode per season where they're just shoving something in your face. Nobody wants that. Yeah. Uh, the best thing that I can think of is something like uh, Ted Lasso, which just finished up, right? In the, the last season, they were kind of borderline trying to shove something in your face, but in a way they were doing it actually kind of artistic and kind of nice right there was a gay character and while they were talking about it it wasn't a shove in the face oh gay 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 pride whatever you know it was a hey it's a small conversation about it how people don't say certain words around it but it wasn't like in your face it was nice it was actually a really good episode i actually appreciated it you know there's ways to do it yeah but it, it, whatever uh but uh oh, yeah. obviously if nintendo does it it's a hundred percent for money uh right. again with all, all the stuff they've done in the past it's not out of the goodness of their hearts <laughs> yeah 
Right, hundred um, percent. But getting into the uh, depressing news, <laughs> uh, there there was a lot of news uh, in this last week. Um, some of it, well, all of it, not great. <laughs> uh, there's maybe two or three things that we're probably gonna hit on really well. And the last topic, um, I'll, I'll get to when we get there. <laughs> um, but the first one, and kind of to lighten the mood on it a little bit, uh, I actually mentioned this to you a little bit. Uh, I forgot to send you the video, so you don't have a lot of preface to this, but a, a substitute teacher in Texas basically hosted a fight club <laughs> in a middle school, of all things. Yeah. So basically 12-year-olds fighting each other in 30-second rounds. Uh, what she did was she screamed at all the kids, hey, don't fucking record me, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, kids were recording her. And she had one of the kids stand guard on one of the doors. So if anybody tried to get into the, the room, she'd be like, all right, everybody sit down. And everybody would go and sit down and act like nothing was ever happened and she was just teaching. <laughs> um, how this guy became a bigger deal, of course, was kids were obviously recording it. And one of the kids got a major concussion and was bleeding. <laughs> um, how stupid you have to be so, to think you're not going to get caught uh, is my main thing. But so were they like <laughs> not ahead. on mats or anything? Were they on like the hard? No. hard... Oh yes. My God. They... It was legitimately rough and rowdy uh, in a middle school. With, but with twelve year olds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <my. laughs> the... It's just teachers nowadays, man. Like what? Like, is that yeah. some you think she enjoys watching? And, it, uh, and I mean, when you're 12... She would have to, right? When you're 12, you're what, 5th or 6th grade? So, right, 6th grade, these kids have got phones. Some, at least some of them have, have, have phones by then, and then, you know, right. obviously they can take photos, videos, and stuff. Like, oh. Well, and that is also, like, why also you're not properly trained in any way, shape, or form. One wrong hit can kill you, especially when you're young and you're still developing your... Your bone structure, your skull, and everything like that. You know, a, a good punch to the nose hits your brain, you're done. Um, and like, what are these kids are, like, trying to do, you know, WWE moves? Like, they're trying to do, you know, Undertaker's move, and right. instead of dropping to your knees, you know, I don't know, they just take it further, right? I don't know, just, it's, it's, yeah. it's very childish and dumb. Oh. Uh. Hundred uh, percent. Uh, this one is definitely a very interesting topic. Uh, not necessarily for the context, but for the consequences of it. I think uh, AOC uh, had a fake Twitter uh, <laughs> make the rounds because it was making a uh, lots of very weird and kind of suspicious tweets. But it was long enough, right? where it looked like it was the real thing. Uh, it was hiding that it was a parody account. I had the blue check mark because you can buy the blue check mark, even though AOC's Twitter is gray. And that's supposed to symbolize that she's a politician, a figure uh, that you're supposed to actually follow or whatever. Uh, but this fake Twitter account said that uh, she thought Elon Musk was very cute. Uh, and I think where this gets really controversial is uh, our boy Elon Musk decided it was a good idea to respond <laughs> and basically said thank you and it tricked not only uh people like mr beast but other politicians who were questioning her uh and so this gets into a big thing of that in the last couple months uh twitter has really turned into a wild wild west <laughs> uh where almost anybody and everybody can say whatever the hell they want to uh, there's no safeguards for anything like it did before Elon. Uh, and there's really not a whole lot of banning either, uh, like when they ban Trump or anything like that, right? So uh, it's a very interesting <laughs> situation that uh, we're finding into. Uh, what are your thoughts as far as this story, but then just Twitter in general, how it's kind of evolved as of lately yeah or i guess there's one thing in twitter i'll uh i'll get into later but with, with that story right if if that account was 
didn't have parody in the title or wasn't meeting the rules, right? There should be some kind of uh, consequence for the account if there isn't already. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I like Twitter, uh, obviously, a lot more nowadays. Um, I'm all for freedom of speech. Uh, yep. Drama's uh, kind of entertaining, but obviously died down. Um, uh, but, yeah, I guess without diving too deep, uh, freedom of speech is a good thing, uh, especially uh, with how some things are going and how some people do yeah. things. Uh, <clears throat> But, uh, but, sure. but yeah, I mean, was there any consequence? I also don't, I don't have a problem with him, him responding. Uh, you know, just mm -hmm. like if the shoe was on the other foot, if there was a parody Elon Musk account that said, I think AOC is cute and AOC responded, thank you. I don't know. Right. Would that even be like a story? Would anyone even care? I think if the shoe was on the other foot, she would have went off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on both, uh, I, especially if she got tricked, right? If she got tricked and, and whatnot, she would be like, oh, it's Elon Musk's fault, blah, blah, blah. But if it was something that she thought that Elon actually said, uh, she probably would have went off anyway. <laughs> uh, like, you're not supposed to be talking to me that in that way type of, or whatever in a public forum. So it, it, I think it would have been a lose-lose no matter what. Uh, but I did not see if there was any true consequences. I'm sure the account uh, ended up getting deleted or something like that. Uh, yeah. I, right. I feel like that would have been the smart play with how much traction the story got. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I don't know. So, but yeah. Uh, uh, if you're, if you're, Looking at certain tweets and you see something that's a little suspicious, maybe look into it. I mean, that that, that should be, just be the rule in general when it comes to the internet. So, yeah. uh, just common sense at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> another thing about common sense, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be a very delicate topic, I think. Uh, but uh, Andrew Tate, uh, he recently did a interview with bbc uh he did not like how the interview went uh he felt that he was being attacked by the reporter uh bringing up past things and, and so on so he released his own <laughs> uh 30 minute uh video uh basically kind of uh explaining his situation but also just attacking bbc for for about 30 minutes uh and whatnot and he uh he felt harassed <laughs> and uh being basically made a joke uh which i i can kind of uh see on both sides but before i give my thoughts uh did you see either of the interviews uh or kind of know the full go around i guess uh I, i've seen clips of the interview uh but yeah. but not not the full thing i I feel like it is an interview I've seen before where, right, the, the media or whoever, you know, they try to say everything he says is wrong and he he fights back and the claims they make. You know, it's almost some of these people interviewing Trump, you know, where they got to they gotta say everything's wrong. Um, right. He, I also saw another clip that came out today that going forward, anytime he speaks to... Fifty grand or a box yeah. of chocolates, yeah. uh, and then he's <laughs> and then the money's going to go towards uh, one of his charities, which uh, which is uh, smart of him to do that. Um, yeah. But uh, but no, I mean it was kind of the same. I, I, I it, it was it was pretty predictable. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you know, like this this could start a real deep uh, conversation. But the people, <laughs> the billionaires that own. The news sites, they don't want you to be like Andrew Tate. They want right. you to be single, no kids, work a shit job, go home, have no interest starting a business, being rich, and mm -hmm. yeah, they just want you to do that so you can't work no more, 65, 70. So, right. so of course they want you to shut up. Right. It, it's a really fine line, too, because... 
in a way, nobody's right, right? You could hate the interview. You could even hate Tate. Uh, but you have to kind of see kind of what the media is trying to do and how they're trying to turn things. Because even if you go back as far as when CNN was interviewing Trump here just a couple of weeks ago, they were getting bashed like crazy because you know what these people are going to say. You know what Trump's going to say. You know what Tate's going to say. Right? Especially when you bring up certain things that he said in the past, he's going to stand by most of it, uh, and, and so on. You know, it's, you're using him for a certain point of view or just to get those clicks uh, at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, and it's more of, do you really want to give certain people platforms and, and kind of glorify them? I think Tate was under the impression that they were going to talk more about Romania and his prison sentence and and so on. It just turned into more of his masculine takes, um, which it, we've seen it all, right? He said everything that he's gonna say. He's gonna keep saying the things that he's say, you know. Right. So it's how 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 many times are you gonna say the same thing? Right, you know, so and, and right. Like, it's how many times are you gonna take things out of context that are super edited? I remember after that interview, someone edited something to make the person interviewing him sound like a misogynist. You know, it's just <laughs> they, they ripped the words out and put it in the right order. Um, right. So, I don't know, it's just just kind of the same song and dance. <laughs> no, 100%. And I think, I think it's the middle or the end of june his house arrest is up so uh that's something that we should definitely keep an eye on to see if he ends up going back to prison all charges dropped uh is he going to leave romania for good um and so on so i know it hit right so is uh right uh, I don't think they can extend them anymore. I think they've extended as far as they can without fully actually charging. So uh, I think it's been kind of interesting. Uh, his brother, Tristan, has kind of completely stayed out of the limelight as much as possible, while Andrew has kind of been back and forth. And this is his first actually like kind of coming out ceremony uh, in a way. Yeah. So kind of kind of interesting how this is going to go uh, kind of going forward. So um Kind of going with uh, mass media uh, and, and the news is uh, YouTube is in the news and uh, not for the greatest of reasons. Um, in the last election, we oh. saw lots of things, right? Lots of misinformation, misleading articles, some articles that were actually true but were taken away. Uh, people so they wouldn't read it uh, because they didn't know if it was actually accurate or not um, but YouTube has come out and said that they are no longer going to remove any wrong or misleading election misinformation uh, and this does not just go with the US elections uh, but it's also I guess they were go doing this with South American and some European elections as well uh, so basically you can say whatever the hell you want, right? This kind of goes hand in hand with the Twitter uh, conversation we just had. Uh, so we don't have to dive too much into this unless you want to. <laughs> uh, but I do find it interesting that you that basically anybody can say anything, right? You could be CNN and you could release uh, a news thing strictly on opinion only and you could be accredited you news source and it's not going to really matter right as long as it's on youtube so uh definitely very very interesting uh move on youtube's part yeah I, i'm surprised right away i i was looking around a little bit i didn't see youtube like when they made this change i'm surprised they didn't release some kind of statement as to why um mm -hmm. uh, again unless i just i uh, didn't see it um but Right, it, it's it's a step towards uh, freedom of speech, um, oh. but I don't know. I'm just I'm not I'm not super into that because I just I don't know I don't know how different my it's life so would be right now if if Trump were president, you know. Right, it, it's kind of <laughs> the weird thing. So I get like ninety percent of my news from YouTube, uh, but I have 
trusted sources. Like I, I listen to Philip DeFranco almost every day, um, just because he's trusted. They do all the research that I don't have to do, and it's a mix of po- politics, but there's also a lot of smaller stuff, right? Uh, that's more on the funnier side of things. So it, it's definitely going to be interesting how this goes forward, but usually if it's misleading or wrong, it's probably not going to get the the limelight of going on trending or on the news feed anyway. So hopefully it really won't have that much of an impact as it is. So um, The next topic is one that we might cut out <laughs> uh, depending on where where this goes okay. and, <laughs> it, 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 and if we get fired up about it or not because I, I actually have a really big conspiracy theory about this in particular uh, so uh, a plane crash in DC uh, over the last uh, yesterday actually uh, basically what happened was a plane was going from i forget exactly where it went but it was going towards new york uh or new jersey and instead of landing it turned around and uh was heading back to where it came from uh as it was going over dc uh f-16 scrambled out of nowhere and actually produced a sonic boom that was heard all throughout dc uh and they said when they came upon the plane uh it looked like the pilot was slumped over and was over the uh, throttle and so on. And eventually the plane crashed uh, in the forest. Uh, as of right now, there are four dead. Uh, a mom, a nanny, uh, the baby, and one other. So I mean, obviously the, the, the pilot. Um the surprising thing that got released is they were major donors of Trump <laughs> mm. uh, that actually significantly financially backed him. Uh, and they, the government, made sure to release a statement saying that the F 16s did not shoot down the plane. Now, in the little bit of knowledge that I know of aviation, I do know that when you are flying within the country and you have a shorter flight, Typically, you carry 2.5 times the fuel that is needed. Um, and what they said was when the plane was going towards where it was supposed to land, it was on autopilot. And for some reason, the autopilot somehow malfunctioned. It was going back to the original destination uh, before the whole DC debacle thing happened. And that it ran out of fuel. And that is why it crashed, and everybody died of hyperfixation because of the loss of pressure, right? Uh, it does not make any sense. <laughs> um, I think, now, like, as you know, I'm not the biggest Trump supporter in the world. Why? Well, he's not a great person in any way, shape, or form, but I don't think the government wants any chance or hope that Trump has a even an opportunity of being back in the government because all eyes were on the government the whole presidency of trump we were nitpicking every single thing the government was doing uh we were we were actually speaking out on things you know you couldn't hate trump for everything but the one thing that you have to give him is hey he opened our eyes i i pay attention more to politics than i ever have uh while i have liked with biden being in office i kind of has been kind of foggy on things in the, in the recent years um besides a couple of issues but overall you know when trump was in office i was listening i was in the know you know yeah. and the last thing the government wants is for that to happen so yeah i do think uh something shady was happening some kind of cover-up for the largest donors for Trump? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think something shady is up because it, the, the facts do not make sense at this time. So. Yeah. Um, and at first I thought you were going uh, 9-11 with that. Uh, like, what okay. they, like they were going to hit some in New York. But you're saying um, his biggest donors were on this plane that got in an accident. Um, it's a private plane, too. So, Which is, yeah, even, even more weird. That it's private. Um, 
and and, and right because uh, I remember the, like some of the 9-11 conspiracies really talk about going off of autopilot it's uh, it's really not that easy when you're trying to hit someone but again they're just trying in this case just trying to crash um, right. which doesn't make sense because as far as what I've seen on planes it's a fucking button <laughs> so uh, I don't know um, hey, the whole thing just doesn't seem to add up to me, I'm not a big conspiracy theory. I'm more of a black and white with a with some gray uh, type of thing. But uh, too many red flags are in this yeah. story currently. It, you know, it's still developing for sure, but there's it, too many red flags and and also the the scrambling of the F-16s immediately uh, is really weird. And that they were going so fast to produce a sonic boom. Uh, it 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 just doesn't fully add up, and I think a lot of people are kind of raising their their eyebrows to it, and that's why they came out and said, "Hey, we didn't shoot it down. We didn't shoot it down." So, yeah. 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 No, right, <laughs> right. A lot of a lot of red flags. I think you put it best there. So. Uh, um, I didn't know exactly where that story was going to go. I didn't know if you had even heard about it. So I wanted to to forewarn that it it might not make the cut, but we'll see. (laughs) Leave it in there. It's interesting. For sure. Comment what you think if you're listening. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But uh, as far as news and stuff goes, that's what I had. Did you have anything uh, too Uh, glaring? Yeah, I guess uh, I I had one thing to make comments on. Uh, So... uh, on Twitter over the weekend, uh, they had the What is a Woman uh, documentary, uh, or that was free, and I believe, I don't know how much you got to pay for it now or before, but yeah, uh, so I f- listened to it Friday night on uh, I Had a Long Car Ride, um, yeah. and I purposely never texted you about watching it or asked if you had just because it's really cringy at times. Just awkward sure. moments and then you're hearing about, you know, surgeries gone wrong. Uh, so if I wasn't, if I didn't have a real long car ride with nothing else to do, I, there, I, I wouldn't have finished it uh, beginning to end. Um, yeah. So really, it's it's asking like people that are in the know about gender studies, what is a woman, and of course none of them can give an answer, or not much of an answer, uh, and even mm-hmm. asking random people on the street. And then they look at uh, trans people and some of the surgeries and some of the difficulties there. Um, and, and obviously the people at Daily Wire that were putting this on are very anti, anti-trans. anti And yeah. I, I guess, you know, again, uh, I, I'll always lean towards freedom, um, where if you want to be trans, go for it. Um, where, where I kind of draw the line, and even if I'm someone in, like, the trans community is kids under 18... I, I think under 21, but at least 18. Like, they, they can't be having these surgeries, hormone blockers, um, anything like that, because a lot of them do regret it. I wish they... Where the, document, where the documentary kind of lacked was statistics on some of the stuff, like how many people are yeah. actually getting these surgeries, how many of these people um, actually regret it. Uh, I guess they asked different people uh, uh, for for it, and of course they didn't have the information. Uh, but but like these gender ther- uh, gender affirming therapists, um, what they're called that that are like with the kids, telling them yeah, you probably were meant to be uh, the opposite gender, um, mm-hmm. kind of coaching them. I I. Obviously, like that's that's got to go. And, and if you're a part of that community, like maybe you can talk about it online. But like in person, like like coaching younger people, kids, 
uh, that that's just that that's not good. I right. and I and then I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, after listening to it, well, you know, is everything we do right? You know, um, like Christian values, man, woman, oh. marriage, and and maybe maybe not. But my bottom line was, I I think parents should have the final say on on the kind of counseling, guiding, and parenting and values and how they want the kids yeah. um, to look at these kind of issues and thoughts and all that. Right. So kind kind of a lot of rambling there. Uh, no, 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 for but, sure. But yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. I I didn't even really hear about this documentary and kind of like where I stand on that stuff you know kind of similar ish you know I don't care what anybody else does as long as it doesn't affect me for the most part um as long as it doesn't affect me or the family the only thing with the parent part that I have a small problem with is just because recently in the last year or so with the with the acceptance like everybody should be accepted I don't care if you're gay, straight, trans, or whatever, you know. Um, but we're in a kind of point in with our society with, like, social media and stuff that parents are using kids for views. Um, and there have been some parents that have kind of brainwashed or manipulated kids into thinking, hey, you know, uh, you played with that Barbie once, you know, maybe, maybe you, you're supposed to be a girl or something like that. Look, when I was a, a little kid and I was at my cousin's, all I had was my cousin about my age, and she was playing with brats. That's all I had to do, so I played with her, right? Doesn't mean I was supposed to be a girl. Doesn't mean I was gay. Yeah. I was just a bored little kid, right? You do that when you're kids, you know? Um, and, and that's not a bad thing in any way, shape, or form. It's a toy. I was six or whatever years old, you know? So that, that's... You know, I, I don't I don't have any problems with the eighteen thing, or or even necessarily twenty one. I think twenty one or maybe we're pushing it a little bit just because there's so many things that you have to wait for till you're twenty one. Um, you know, and you can join the military at eighteen is always like my biggest thing. Hey, if you can, if you're an adult, you can join the military and do whatever you want. I feel like you can almost just should be able to do whatever you want at eighteen, but at the same time, you're stupid at eighteen. Yeah. So there's lots of arguments with both. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I feel like the trans thing is a never-ending, gonna, gonna be a never-ending debate because there's a billion different arguments for everything, and both sides don't want to hear each other's side, <laughs> and, and don't want to find any kind of middle, middle ground. You know, I can go on and on when it comes to sports and and everything else, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, nobody really wants to hear that. So. It is what it is. Yeah. But, uh, I, again, with the statistics they didn't really have, I wish um, they had some kind of statistics on how many of these gender-affirming therapists there are or mm-hmm. how many kids uh, are seen by one. Um, yeah. Because uh, I'm actually surprised you didn't hear about how it was free on Twitter this weekend because, like, Elon, Jordan Peterson... And again, Ben Shapiro, all the Daily Wire guys um, were, were retweeting it. It got over 100 million views. It was, uh, yes. it was, uh, it was over an hour and a half uh, um, uh, documentary. Um, mm. and, and again, it was just, it, it, it's tough to recommend if it's ever free again, just because it is cringy and gross at, uh, a lot of the times. Um, right. Um, but, but, yeah, I mean, again, you know, when we grow up, there wasn't gender or therapy therapists. Like, I don't, I don't even know how popular trans was back in the 2000s, you know. Not too so, much. It's mostly drag. Yeah, much. I guess there's that. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I guess that was my thoughts on that. Um, yeah, for anyone yeah. that wants to oh. watch it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, but, hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully next week we have plenty to talk about. Oh, I'm sure there will be. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, no, that was the uh, the good old players only podcast. It got a little, got a, definitely 
some interesting yeah. uh, news topics this week, yeah. and I'm sure I'm sure it's only going to be more and more deep dives as we go to kind of go forward here. And uh, yeah, so make sure to uh, to subscribe for more. Uh, yeah. Check out the <laughs> that'll be funny. Check out the links below. Uh, oh, yeah. And then yeah, check out our other content. Peace. Absolutely. Later.